My name is Martha McDonald. I'm a registered nurse from St. Francis Hospital, retired. I'm 81 years old. I was born 2-15-21. Uh, I went to St. Francis Hospital in Hartford in 1938 to 1941. I was a, eight months short of being uh, of the right age to go into training. But the nun said because I was a big enough girl, I could I could go in. So uh, what, the only disagreeable thing about that was I had to wait at the end of my training to go and do my state boards because I had to be 21 years old. Uniforms were to the calf of a leg, not like they are today, or as they had generally as time went on, they became shorter. We had to wait for our caps about three months. We had to work hard in order to earn those caps. And then, when we received them, we wore them with great pride. Then we were to work hard to finally graduate and receive our stripe on our cap. That was the ultimate goal for us. Dad told everyone that you were a graduate registered nurse. And in those days, that was the highest of nursing that you could get. There were no disposables, instruments, needles, etc. for sterilized after every use. Bath were every Monday or every morning, and PM care was given in the afternoon, which consisted of a back rub and a face and hands wash. That was just a routine. We had ward day once a week. Everything that was moved out of the wards, dusted, the floors were scrubbed, and then everything was put back in place. Now I went to St. Francis, which was all manned by all nuns. So they were, they were very strict, but they respected you and you respected them and they loved their work which made you appreciate what you were doing even more. If a supervisor who, who in those days was a nun found dust or anything that didn't suit them after war day, you lost two hours off in the afternoon. Now that was your time off every day, two hours. So you, uh, oftentimes it was a class time. So if you had uh, a day of war day and you had to have, an, have the days, the hours off of that day, uh, and you had to come back or lose them, that was not very pleasant. We were allowed one afternoon off a week. Now I lived in Waterbury and I would have to rush to get the bus downtown uh, at, uh, I guess it was at the uh, uh, railroad station. Sometimes there was a train, but mostly it was a bus. And we get there so maybe around 12 o'clock. And then by the time we got home, it was a half hour by then, um, we had to return on the 8 o'clock bus at home, from home to back to Hartford at night because we had to be in by 11 o'clock. When a nun or a doctor approached you in the corridors, or if you were sitting, or if you passed them, you had to either stop and acknowledge, good morning, doctor, good morning, sister, or you had to, if you were sitting, you had to stand up, just as a mean, being respectful of them and their position. It's not like it is today, believe me. As I was too young to take my state boards, when I graduated, I had to wait six months. However, I was able to work at the Waterbury Hospital under supervision until such time as I took my um, state boards. I graduated in 1941, and I went to visit a nat in Washington, D.C. As it was in December, D-Day happened, and I had to be quickly sent back to Waterbury because of the fear 
of um, bridges being bombed. So it was not that easy, but they finally found a way to get me home within a day or so. After I did private duty, sanatorium duty in Hartford, doctor's office, factory nurse, until I met my husband, and then we had five children, and then I worked after that as a school nurse at St. Thomas and Thomaston, visiting nurse for Thomaston, and then back to St. Thomas until I retired. By now, nurses in the hospital don't, uh, don't wear uniforms the way, only way, the way I knew an RN was by asking. Everything is disposable. Bed, bath, a bed bath is in a bag. And in many ways, the modern times have made nursing, bedside nursing, easier. But some of the human touch has, is not the same. Now that I'm retired, I am still a nurse and a mom to my family.